Alright, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to my thoughts on Dark Souls uh, for the Xbox 360. Um, alright, so this game came out I think last year, November maybe? Maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. I'm pretty sure it was November though. So, Dark Souls is they, as they say, the spiritual successor to Demon Souls. However, um, I think of it as just a sequel. Um, I mean, the, the world and the atmosphere and everything feels like it could be all part of the same world. So, I, I think of it as a sequel, at least. So, uh, Dark Souls, it's known for being a hard-as-fuck game. Like, this is one of the games that people are like, stay away if you're casual, don't go near this game. And, it's for good reason. This game is pretty daunting. You will die hundreds of times. You will spend a good chunk of time playing this game. But, with that said, we'll start it off with the story. Alright, so Dark Souls takes place in a, um, I guess you could say it's a kingdom or something. It's, uh, it's this place called Lordran, or Lordran, something like that. Um, but I think of it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a kingdom. It, that or a really massive city. But, so you, you, uh, you start off the game in the Undead Asylum, and you actually play a undead. Um, so pretty much a zombie type guy. And, alright, so in the beginning we're given this little story about how, um, Basically, there was this era where the dragons completely conquered everything, like, humanity was on the brink, pretty much. The dragons, they were just too powerful for, for everybody to stop them, really, so. Basically, what happens is they discover fire. Um, this might be just, like, a metaphor for, like, power or magic or something, I don't know. But basically, they have the, the will, the power to take on the dragons in their own playing field. And, um, there's basically, like, these four big generals, or four people who are like the turning point pretty much. There's Gwyn and his kingdom. He's like a gigantic king and stuff. And, um, then you have like this witch of wherever, I forgot where she's at, but she has like, she's like a witch and she's got like her daughters of chaos, which are all mages. And you've got uh, this dragon who actually betrayed his own kind and he ends up going mad or something. And uh, then you have this, he's like the Grim Reaper basically. He's, I guess, I don't know, his name is Nito the grave lord or something i don't i don't really understand him but he's basically like this dead monster guy who's really cool um they basically work together to wipe out the dragons and then as they say it begins the era of fire or whatever the age of fire so um that's about as much story as we're really given um it sets down the, the like the base or whatever but immediately we're basically we take control of our character which is in a locked prison cell and we're given the key to break out that's kind of a plot hole in my opinion they you're given the key to break out and it shows the knight who gives it to you but they don't explain why you're given the key to break out from what I understand the whole point of the undead is to be locked up in this prison till the end of time which I think this also plays into another thing I think the undead are actually the, the most capable people in the world or something because they they essentially cannot die they can keep respawning and um, just coming back from the dead. So I think that's their whole point was to be locked up and they can't be a threat to anybody if they're locked up. So you basically break out, you're told you're the chosen one, your goal is to go kill Gawain and his kingdom or whatever. And you basically get thrown into the city of Lordran. Um, like I said, that's basically the entire story of the game. Um, you will basically fight all the guys, you'll fight many bosses, you'll fight big bosses, you'll f you, there's so many areas to explore in this place, it's crazy. Um, which brings me into, um, I guess, I don't know, I'll, I'll talk about the world. Um, this game is beautiful, I gotta say, this is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. It's a lot like, um, if there was a world I could describe it as or compare it to, I would say it's a similar to Shadow of the Colossus. It's like a very empty really unique looking world. There's all these empty buildings and ruined buildings and I guess I guess Shadow doesn't have that many monsters but there are monsters everywhere. They're just like the remnants of society really. And uh, it's just it's weird to see a world that's so empty and like no hope is that no one's full of hope. Everyone's either crazy or like alone with themselves. You never really interact with too many people. You don't have any partners. You don't have any enemies. You're just you're just blankly given the choice to go kill everybody. And I mean, they could expand on that so much if they actually gave the story like 
like let's say some of the bad guys that you're hunting actually like teamed up with each other to take you on or they betrayed each other or they hated each other at least some interaction between them from like you really have no reason to kill them aside from you're told to and that just to me it doesn't really make an interesting story um, however I think the world makes up drastically for that it's it's such a unique world and cool world to explore each area is drastically different and stuff um, I will approve of story just because it is really unique and if you actually get into the lore like read all the lore and the background stuff it is actually really intriguing stuff um, with that said I'll go over to gameplay um, so Dark Souls if you're not aware is a third person action RPG um, as I mentioned earlier, it's one of the hardest games this generation, and you'll die a lot. <clears throat> Alright, so, from the beginning, you create your character, you're given a couple choices, like which class, which only affects your base stats, which, you, once you actually get out of the prison, you're able to level up your character any way you want to. Class is just kind of like a little shortcut to, to like a basic character build for that type of playstyle. So if you like magic, you can start off with magic. If you like melee, you can be more HP and strength oriented, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it, it's fairly basic, basically. It's an open world castle, and you complete puzzles, you'll get keys to open up other portions of the world, and each area is linked to other areas. You'll find elevators in the cave, which will take you up to Demon's Ruins. From the Demon's Ruins, you can go to Lost Isolate. Um, it's, it's, it's a really crazy world. The best way I could describe it is maybe Castlevania. Um, yeah, I'd say Castlevania is probably one of the best games to describe the world, like the world ex exploration. But, with that said, um, it is fairly standard. You basically go from room to room, killing enemies, picking up loot, finding shortcuts, uh, progressing to different areas, killing bosses, so on, so on. Um, I will talk about features. Alright, so... Let's see what I can mention first. Um, Alright, so the biggest difference from this and uh, Demon Souls is... Like I said, it's no longer... It's like an open world. It's D D Demon Souls had this level system where it was like World 1, World 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 1, 4. Then you had like World 2, which was like level 2, level 2, 1, level 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. This game is straight up open world. Um, you have this thing called a bonfire, which is kind of like a checkpoint. You can uh, basically you go up to it, you light it. That if you die, you'll spawn there. You can repair your items there. You can upgrade it so you have more health for storing items from it. Uh, it's it's basically your 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 safe spot. You can't get attacked there. You can upgrade your stuff. You can repair your stuff. You can uh, yeah, I don't know. You can store stuff. There's a lot of options on it. Uh, if only you could sell your items directly at it too, but you can't unfortunately. Um. Alright, so there's the note system, which is, this game is online and offline, but they've, they've got this really cool system where you can interact with online players even if you are playing by yourself. You'll see notes on the ground, and if you click on the note, it'll say, like, either a hint or a note, like, let's say you're coming up to a boss and you didn't know there's a boss coming. You see a note, and you click on the note and it says, boss ahead. It'll, that'll inform you that there's a boss coming up. Um, you could find one that says there's treasure around this area. You'll find ones that'll say shortcut over here. It's it's a really cool system. Um, and Demon Souls and Dark Souls pulls it off really well. Uh, there's blood stains which allow you to show another player's death. I didn't really use that that often. There's PvP which is where you can invade other players' games. Uh, you can be invaded. This is all if you're human though. You have to be in human mode which it's kind of a hassle because you have to get this item called humanity. You have to use that, then you have to go to a bonfire, then you can convert yourself back to a human. That's kind of annoying, but once you do, you can be invaded, you can invade, you can invite people into your game for co-op. Um, oh, I gotta mention this also. The servers in this game, they're horrible. Uh, they have they have this server system where they don't tell you which server you're in, so you could wait 10 minutes for a friend to just find your symbol on the ground that allows him to join you. Very annoying, and I don't like that. Alright, um, the AI is very fierce in this game. Um, you have to be constantly dodging and blocking and watching their movements. They'll chase you for a long time. It's pretty cool. Um, there's a crafting system that's pretty good. You basically upgrade weapons. Um, it's kind of cool because you're not actually making new weapons. What you're doing is you're upgrading weapons. So you can find the first sword in the game. 
and upgrade this to the point where it's like plus 15, it does an additional 300 damage. You could upgrade it to a lightning attribute, holy attribute, chaos attribute. There's so many different attributes you can put onto your weapons and stuff. Very cool. Um, the level design's pretty cool. There's hidden paths, there's shortcuts, it's a hard ass game. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it for gameplay. Uh, I will approve of it. My only complaint with it, with it was the, the servers online. They should have been well more tested than what they were. Uh, me and my friend spent a good amount of time, like an hour or two, just trying to get into each other's games, but... Um, it's very complicated sometimes. Okay, going over to sound, I will disapprove of it just because it is average OST, average voice acting, and all that. So, I, will, I won't approve of sound. Going over to my likes and dislikes, um, I will say that the online is very innovative. Um, I, I know I just mentioned that the servers are sucky, but if you actually look past it, you can see a lot of innovative shit. You know, you can you can join your friends in what is an offline game, um, and it drastically helps them out, helps you out. You get experience, he gets experience. Um, you know, there's the no system. There's invading other players. I guess you can also set, have an item that sends invaders into other people's worlds. It's it's pretty crazy stuff. Um, and then there's a couple dislikes I actually have. There's a lot of frame rate slowdown in this game. Certain areas, mainly the uh, Blight Town, namely uh, Blight Town. There was uh, New Londo Ruins. A couple of these areas, they just lag crazy amounts for no reason. Climbing down a ladder and it drops down to like three frames per second. And from what I understand, this isn't just a 360 issue. Uh, I was watching a couple playthroughs on YouTube and. Uh, they had the same exact issue I had, and they're on the PS3 version. So, no console fan bitches. Just there is some slowdown, and I already mentioned the co-op servers. Um, it's just it's very frustrating. All right, going over to my overview. Um, you know, Dark Souls, it's it's not a bad game, and it's not like an amazing game, but it really is a good game. You know, the story is interesting. The lore is well, not the story is interesting, but the lore behind it is very it's it's pretty crazy stuff. Um, the world design is really good. <clears throat> um, combat is really good. It's it's kind of a bit too heavily on memorization instead of reflex based, but I don't really see how they could fix that too much. Um, I, I wish they improved on the sound design a little bit. The music is just so average to me that I I want to turn it off. But I kind of like the the haunting opera type music when you're fighting bosses. Um. Yeah, I don't know. If I say get, try this game out at least, run it out, see if you like it. It's it, it's an interesting game, but otherwise just pick it up when it's pretty cheap. It's a pretty fun game. Uh, it took me around I think 60 hours to beat. 